Hello everyone and welcome to re-entry. In this video we will dive into the environmental and control system of uh, the Project Mercury capsule. So we're currently sitting inside the spacecraft uh, in orbit around Earth and uh, the main idea of today's lesson is to kind of guide you through some of the core elements of uh, how the Mercury capsule is pressurized, uh, how it provides uh, oxygen and how it maintains temperatures on board uh, and how it cools down equipment and so on. So let's get started. Uh, so first of all, uh, the basics of the environmental and control system can be monitored using this side of the panel. So basically on the right side you have this uh, light blue air colored uh, panel which contains most of the information that you need to know about the environmental and control system. Uh, the uh, environmental and control system is usually just uh, uh, shortened to ECS, uh, which basically consists of uh, oxygen, uh, coolant, uh, fans, and various equipments to kind of circulate all of this inside of the cabin. Uh, mainly, the uh, Mercury spacecraft has uh, three um, core circuits for. Um, for oxygen uh, and uh, the main one is through the astronauts suit and this suit is uh, almost isolated from the cabin uh, meaning that the cabin itself can be fully depressurized but the oxygen and condensed air is going through the suit environment and uh, through the environmental control system uh, to be kind of uh, uh, conditioned before it kind of goes back into the suit and this allows the astronaut to breathe uh, during the entire mission even in the event of uh, a ga cabin decompression uh, however the normal mode of the ECS is to pressurize the cabin and the suit uh, so they both are um, uh, part of the ECS uh, flow. Uh, the third um, mode of the ECS is the emergency mode and the emergency mode allows the oxygen to come directly from the, uh, from the two oxygen tanks on board and into the suit. Uh, this flow kind of bypasses most of the components of the normal suit uh, circuit uh, and instead goes directly into the suit uh, meaning that the air that comes into the suit is uh, really cold. Uh, this mode is always triggered automatically uh, during re-entry. So uh, once you are uh, in the atmosphere, the emergency U O2 li uh, light here will illuminate together with the tone. And this is all normal. So if you ever flown a Mercury mission uh, or if you're planning to do that and you suddenly hear this alarm and see this warning light uh, during landing, remember that this is all normal. Uh, you can also trigger the emergency uh, oxygen uh, or suit circuit here by just pulling this handle and you can see that the same thing happens. And I can close that. So let's dive into some of the more details uh, of the ECS. So first of all, um, here you can see that you have a couple of switches. One is the cabin fan and then uh, you have another one which is called the suit fan which has three positions. The cabin fan has two positions of the normal. Suit fan has normal, uh, number one, and number two. And we'll dive into kind of what these actually means pretty soon. Uh, the other uh, instruments here is uh, the uh, amount of oxygen you have left. You have two oxygen tanks, one primary and uh, another secondary. And the way that this is designed is that the, f uh, the primary oxygen will be consumed first and once this one has been depleted or used up, then the secondary oxygen will uh, kick in. Uh, I'll dive into kind of how this works pretty soon. Uh, the other one is the amount of oxygen in the cabin and you have the suit environment, which contains how uh, warm the air in the suit is and the pressure of the suit. Then you have uh, the steam vent temperatures. This is all based on uh, water being evaporated to cool things down. And I'll cover this pretty soon. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, the sensor temperatures. We have the cabin air uh, 
temperatures and the cabin uh, pressure. So we'll dive, in, dive into some of this uh, system that kind of drives the values behind these uh, pretty soon. Uh, the other thing here is that you have the cabin pressure, the oxygen emergency uh, loop, excess suit uh, water, excess, excess cabin water, and then um, uh, fuel quantity, retro warning, and retro reset warning lights here. And the ones that are related to the ECS, the cabin pressure, auto emergency, uh, excess suit uh, H2O, and excess cabin H2O. So those are the ones that you need to worry about uh, regarding the ECS. So obviously uh, the ECS is deeply coupled with uh, almost everything on board, uh, including the electrical power system that produces heat, uh, which means that the ECS will need to cool this down. The same uh, applies to the air that you breathe and, and vent out. All of this needs to be con uh, conditioned. Uh, you need to re remove uh, particles, hair, and all that through filters, and then you'll need to ensure that the CO2 levels are uh, within normals, etc. So if I now open up the uh, uh, flight documents, I've already uh, opened up the Mercury uh, manual here, and you can see that uh, this diagram uh, will cover kind of the big overview of the ECS. So I'll start uh, this lesson by just going through the core elements of this diagram. So if we start at the primary oxygen bottle and the secondary oxygen bottle, you can see that air uh, goes out from these two uh, uh, bottles and into a circuit. Uh, one is to the emergency oxygen rate valve. This one is only open if you are in the uh, O2 emergency mode. And you can see that the oxygen then goes directly into this line here and into the suit. So the, these black lines are where the air travels in the suit circuit uh, mainly. So then you have uh, the other direction. So this one is usually closed. The other direction is that uh, air goes up through something called the cabin pressure control valve and the suit pressure regulator. So uh, as I mentioned, the two primary modes uh, of the ECS is the cabin and suit uh, uh, modes. So the air then goes through a pressure regulator and into the suit circuit. And the suit circuit is basically a loop that, that allows the air to travel um, uh, all the way until it's basically consumed. So the air first travels into this, uh, the loot, uh, uh, loop and through a suit circuit uh, shutoff valve and into uh, uh, a dual path. So uh, this number one suit compressor and the number two suit compressor uh, compressor is basically uh, two fans that drives the uh, oxygen through this entire loop uh, over and over again. So this uh, two compressor fans are controlled by the suit fan switch here. So Norm will uh, automatically use uh, number one, and if this for some reason fails, then it will automatically start number two uh, uh, fan. So uh, if you want to control this manually, you can set this to number one. Now the this suit is active, and over here, this suit is active. But typically you would like to uh, let this be in the Norm position. So the uh, air then goes into the uh, carbon dioxide, so CO2, and odor obs uh, absorber. This condenses the air, and then it goes th uh, through something called the suit heat exchanger. This suit heat exchanger allows the astronaut to uh, select how much the air should be cooled down. And once the air is cooled down through the suit heat exchanger, it will uh, enter something called a water separator, and then it will rejoin uh, um, the loop into the suit environment and back into the, uh, the circuit, and then go through a solid strap. Uh, typically, you breathe air, um, you um, uh, might uh, you know, produce some particles or uh, get some hair into the, the this circuit, and this is something that you want to avoid. So uh, this uh, trap here is basically a filter that uh, pushes the air through and removes all those particles. Then you have a pressure, pressure relief valve, and then the suit is basically restarted back through the 
fans and so on. So the air kind of goes in this circle. The thing that happens inside of the suit environment is that the astronaut, for example, uh, consumes air. So the astronaut is breathing and this air is then uh, spent or used or consumed by the, uh, the astronaut. And the, uh, the valves here allows uh, the uh, oxygen to be um, applied into the the loop once the, the air is consumed. So the uh, suit pressure regulator detects that, okay, does the suit actually need more air now? And if it does, then yes, let's add some more air. Uh, and the relief valve uh, allows the suit to get rid of air if there's for some reason too much pressure inside of the, the suit loop. Uh, the other thing that I would like to quickly cover is that this suit loop here is um, maintaining the pressure of something called a coolant tank oxygen supply. So this is the coolant, which is water-based, and this coolant is used to, uh, to um, cool uh, down the uh, suit circuit and the, the cabin circuit and the inverters on board. So um, I mentioned that the air goes through the suit heat exchanger in the suit circuit. The water is then um, uh, being pushed out from the uh, coolant tank into the heat exchanger. And based on what this setting is, so this is the suit temperature, uh, if I set this to seven, I apply maximum cooling. And I set this to one, I set minimum cooling. So this is the amount of water that should go into that uh, ex a heat exchanger. So uh, let's see here. So um, the important thing here is that the water is um, pushed through the heat exchanger and uh, through uh, evaporation the uh, water is then boiled and it kind of vents out from the capsule as steam and then uh, cooling down the air that flows through the heat exchanger. Uh, there is another uh, heat exchanger for the cabin loop. So um, oxygen goes out through the ca cabin pressure control valve and there's a cabin fan that kind of pushes the oxygen around in the cabin and then uh, um, it returns back in. So what uh, the cabin heat exchanger does is that this fan pushes air into the cabin heat exchanger and then uh, cools down the cabin air before it's vented back into the cabin again. So this functions in the same way. It receives water uh, pressurized by the suit uh, circuit. Uh, and based on the cabin temperature, you can select how much water enters the heat exchanger. Uh, and thus uh, deciding how much the cabin should be cooled down. Uh, and then uh, lastly, you have a similar concept for the inverter heat uh, exchangers and the inverted temperature allows you to select how cool the inverter should be. Um, so this is basically how you control the temperature in the cabin. In general, the ECS is, has been designed to uh, maintain uh, something around 80 uh, degrees of Fahrenheit in the cabin and suit environment. But obviously you can uh, modify all of this using these uh, temperature settings here. And keep in mind that um, the cabin might be uh, warmer on the sunny side uh, versus the dark side of Earth. So uh, I think that this uh, covers the main aspects of the ECS. Uh, the other thing that is quite important to quickly cover is uh, you have the snorkel and the snorkel is controlled uh, automatically uh, during entry, but you can also manually open the snorkel here. And the snorkel should be opened at around 20,000 feet of altitude during landing. So basically right after the, the drug has been um, released the, uh, or opened, the snorkel should open and this will um, bring in air through the snorkel valve to maintain uh, uh, cabin pressure uh, depending on the external uh, atmospheric pressure. So. 
uh, during entry you can see that the cabin pressure is uh, increasing and during ascent once you start a uh, mission for example you can see that this uh, needle should be at 14 or basically pegged meaning that uh, you know the external atmosphere is uh, being maintained but during ascent as the external atmosphere kind of reduces the same will happen with the cabin pressure so once the cabin pressure reaches this 5.5 uh, or 5 to 6 uh, green area the environmental control system should try to maintain that pressure uh, and keep the pressure at this uh, level uh, during the rest of the mission all the way until uh, the snorkel is opened or uh, when the um, when the um, um, antenna is jettisoned uh, during uh, shoot deployments which also we have the um, uh, uh, the cabin air uh, inlet valve and uh, cabin air outflow valve opened um, so um, the next diagram uh, or the next part I want to cover is uh, uh, more about the oxygen uh, so that's on page 93 so if I now quickly cover this uh, as I mentioned the um, uh, mercury capsule has two oxygen tanks the primary and secondary and you can see them here on this diagram here so if I zoom in a little bit you can see that the primary oxygen supply is here and then the secondary oxygen supply is there and there are some uh, uh, pressure reducers uh, which uh, reduces the pressure and uh, and allows the oxygen to flow into the pressure uh, suit circuit uh, environment uh, and to the cabin and the this system is designed so that this pressure here is higher than the pressure on the secondary oxygen supply so this uh, oxygen comes out here and this check valve is being held close, closed because the, the pressure from this system is higher than the pressure on this side this means that once this entire primary oxygen supply has, has been depleted then this check valve allows the secondary oxygen to fly out uh, and uh, reach the uh, uh, suit circuit um, and then um, the two oxygen uh, tanks are fully automatic so you will basically not need to do anything uh, with that uh, during the entire mission and the same applies for most of the elements of the ECS with the uh, exception of uh, pressure control so the other thing that I wanted to just quickly mention is uh, the water separator and uh, how water is being used and produced to uh, to allow uh, cooling uh, through the various heat exchangers on board so the um, the water tank uh, receives water from uh, the water separator the water separator if you remember was part of the suit circuit so the air is being pushed through the water separator which humidity is basically um, attached and removed from the air uh, to a sponge so there's a, uh, a huge sponge that collects water and then um, every half hour the programmer on board will trigger uh, a piston engine to basically squeeze that sponge so all the water is uh, being uh, stored in the water tank and this happens every half an hour and this typically takes 30 seconds so this is a fully automatic feature and uh, ensures that there's always water on board to make uh, to to uh, so the cabin heat exchangers the suit heat exchangers and the in uh, inverter heat exchangers are uh, having water to so they can cool down things so every half an hour this happens uh, which allows these heat exchangers to fully function if this uh, for some reason should um, get fully depleted of water then uh, you're going to have issues with temperature control until this uh, water tank is refilled um, okay, uh, the other important aspect of uh, temperature uh, and uh, cabin pressure control 
is uh, in the event of, for example, fire, or if there's a need for you to decompress the cabin, uh, you have a couple of switches that allows you to manually uh, trigger the the, the uh, cabin pressure control valve to repressurize the cabin and the cabin pressure re relief valve to decompress it. So um, the thing here is if I, for example, now try to see if I can uh, turn this around. You can see that on the left console you have two handles. One is called decompress and the other one is called repress. And this uh, basically um, allows you to override the cabin pressure control valve uh, and the cabin pressure re relief valve to open or close. So uh, what you can do here is that you can uh, go in and say that I want to decompress the cabin. Then you can open this and the cabin will be fully decompressed. So if we try to do that now, uh, then a couple of important factors will happen. So first of all, uh, the uh, cabin pressure regulator tries to maintain this 5.5. And if for some reason there is an excessive uh, cabin uh, depressurization, for some reason it could be a, a hole uh, or something else, then uh, the needle will go down. And uh, the ECS will then try to maintain the cabin pressure by applying oxygen, uh, but if for some reason this is not enough and this goes below 4.1, uh, it will shut off the uh, cabin uh, pressure regulator uh, to avoid um, wasting uh, oxygen. So once the cabin pressure is below 4.1, uh, the ECS will stop to try and maintain the cabin and instead shut it off so that the air that is um, left is all going through the suit circuit, meaning that the uh, environment outside of the suit uh, is not functioning as it should and the visor should be closed. So um, if this happens, you will get a warning light uh, of uh, cabin pressure. So if I now go in and say decompress, you can see that once it passed four, you get the cabin pressure uh, uh, warning light. So let me just close that. You can see that now there's uh, uh, there's um, quite little oxygen left and we have the cabin pressure uh, uh, warning light on. And then I can go in and say that I want to repressurize the cabin again. Uh, even the event of fire, this is typically uh, in order to remove all oxygen from the cabin to try and choke the fire. Uh, if there's fumes, smoke or anything else, that can also be vented uh, uh, through this uh, method. And then you can hit repressurize and the cabin uh, will then try to build itself back up towards that uh, area. And remember to shut this one off when you're at around 5.5. 5. And once you're in this area, the ECI should be fully able to relieve and uh, uh, regulate the pressure to get everything back into their normal range. But if you take a look at my oxygen level on the primary uh, bottle, you can see that I've consumed quite a lot of oxygen from this small uh, maneuver that I just did. So always uh, monitor oxygen levels. There might be leakages in the oxygen bottle that slowly drifts this down. Uh, same with the secondary one. Or there may, might be other uh, leaks that consumes oxygen faster, uh, which because it tries to regulate pressure, but uh, pressure is being uh, removed to quite quickly, uh, which then requires more oxygen to maintain the pressure. So always monitor this. And it's quite good habit, hab, uh, habit to for example, every half an hour, try to write down how much oxygen and um, you have left in both bottles. So uh, to sum up, the cabin fan will push oxygen through the cabin heat exchanger, which will maintain cabin temperature through this setting. This decides how much water enters the cabin heat exchanger and thus decides how much water is evaporated to space. Uh, the other uh, switch here, the suit fan, allows you to select which compressor uh, fan, which of the two compressor fans you want to use to circulate air in the uh, suit circuit. And only one fan is used at the time. 
normal will be kind of the automatic way where suit number one is used and if that for some reason doesn't work number two takes over and then uh, lastly um, always make sure that you monitor these uh, things especially the cabin air uh, the suit environment both on uh, temperature and pressure and the cabin pressure uh, and the oxygen levels to make sure that things are uh, normal and uh, working as they should because if there's some big deviations here and you notice something critical you might need to abort the mission and get back to earth early then uh, during landing the snorkel will uh, balance uh, uh, the uh, air and the, the pressure inside of the cabin uh, with uh, uh, air from you know from the atmosphere from earth uh, and pull that into the cabin uh, to uh, regulate the pressure uh, based on the pressure outside the cabin and the same applies to the inlet and outlet valves once the uh, antenna has been jettisoned as the tubes are deployed so with that uh, i uh, think i've covered the main things uh, if you have further questions please let me know in the comments and uh, thank you for playing re-entry